Hello and welcome to another episode of Tech at Work. I'm Reema Tendulkar and I'm here to tell you what is Web 3.0, how does Web 3.0 differ from Web 1 and Web 2 and why Web 3.0 offers us tremendous potential. But first, to the history of Internet. Now, Internet started with Web 1, which was the Internet as we knew it between 1991 to 2004. This was basically a stack of static internet pages. For example, a company could broadcast their information, like their products, catalog them, helping them remove the geographical restrictions associated with traditional brick and mortar businesses. But a user could only search and read the information. There was no user interaction. A user could not order from the company or pay for it online. It was also referred to as the read-only web. Think of it like one big wiki hyperlinked page. Let's move on to Web 2.0, which is the second generation of the internet, which started in 2004. And the big difference between Web 1 and Web 2 is Web 2 allowed interaction on the internet. Users can create content. Think of YouTube, Instagram, Airbnb, Facebook, and also interact with other users. Now, this was not possible in Web 1. In Web 1, you could publish content only if you could code unlike in Web 2. So the big difference between Web 1 and Web 2 is that users could generate content and share it with the internet. But that content was used by large tech companies like Facebook, Amazon, Google to personalize our content and target ads at us, especially with the advent of AI and ML. User data, our data, was sold to the ad companies and a few large tech companies had a monopoly over this data and they were making money on it. They were the masters of these digital assets. That is what we mean when we say data is centralized with these tech companies. Which then leads us to the next iteration of the internet, which is Web 3.0, which is based on the premise that why should data be controlled by a select few, the select technology companies? Why should they have monopoly over our data? Data needs to be decentralized, which means a user, you and I, should have control over our data. Now, blockchain as a technology removes intermediaries. It provides transparency and autonomy, which is why blockchain is a key component of Web 3.0. Now, why should we want decentralization? After all, Facebook and the likes have provided us such great service due to network effect. They've connected us to our family and friends. That platform is so important. What if in the process, our data is used as a product by these companies? The problem is, in Web 2.0, because we do not own anything, we don't own the data, closing a social media account means losing your followers. Closing a streaming service means losing playlists and access to streaming material. Closing an online marketplace listing wipes out a carefully built customer directory. In Web 3.0, in Web 3 world, we own our assets. We can carry them with us across different platforms. The digital assets in Web 3.0 are portable. They are not dependent, they are not owned by the platform. Now this is of special use to small businesses which were at the mercy of the platforms. Today the tech giants have created such a moat around their business so that these platforms could charge the businesses any large commission and the companies had no choice but to pay it. Because leaving that platform means leaving that carefully built customer directory. But in Web 3.0, the business environment could be fairer. So uh, in Web 3.0, the digital assets can be moved around very easily without any penalty. This is of a benefit to a user, a customer and for a company as well, especially the small companies. Which is why decentralization as a concept which Web 3.0 provides is creating such excitement among users because for the first time they will be in control of their data and assets and that is at the heart of the Web 3.0 value proposition. Well, there is much to discuss when it comes to Web 3.0. There are DAOs, NFT, DApps, the spectrum is broad and constantly evolving. There are questions to answer surrounding regulation, adoption and even clarity on how this was evolved. But uh, we'll be back with another update for more on that. Right now, it's me saying adios. Thank you for watching.